I'm Bane666 here, and I'm with <laughs> Spinosaurus Kim. <laughs> Sorry. So okay. It's an interesting the accent you've got there. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know. But um, I'm doing a uh, yeah, I'm doing a stream with Bane again because he wanted to do this. So, are we actually live? I, I can't see it in the, um, in the hangout. It, it, well, it has a bit of latency. Um, but give me a minute. It, it, give it a minute. It, yeah, it's up. To do. Oh, okay. Yeah, there it is. It's there. And yeah, well, um, so you you you've told me not to watch this video yet. So no, not yet. <laughs> I want to surprise you. Yeah, I, I have absolutely no idea what this is. <laughs> well, it, it has nothing to do with feminism, right? So we're we're off topic. Uh, <laughs> it, it, I, I have a feeling it's conspiracy theory. I want to see if you. I want, yeah, well, I want to see if you can guess uh, which group this ideology belongs to. And there is actually a group that believes in this. They've been around for a long time, too. I'll give oh, you a wow. clue. They were founded in 1930. Oh, God. That's yeah. actually... Yeah, it's know. a fairly long video. I, I don't sus I don't expect we'll get through the, the whole thing, but uh, <laughs> even if we get through 10 or 20 minutes, uh, that will be enough, trust me, because it's, uh, it's pretty crazy shit. So, uh, I, I think we should just play it, and um, we'll play a little bit of it, and then and then talk. I, okay. If at any point you think you know who they are, uh, to stop it, and we'll we'll discuss it. Oh, this is okay. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> What is this? I, uh, I actually, oh, fucking banana. Oh shit, yeah. Otherwise we might get What? In. Yeah, okay, um, no. Uh, it's a, uh, um, there's a thing with streams. Uh, if you, um, you gotta post, like, only 20 seconds, otherwise you can get, like, copyright strikes and stuff. Uh, I don't Yeah, you gotta you pause one. it periodically or whatever, but I, I, I just fight the copyright strikes and they tend to go away. It's only a stream, I don't think so. we'll get a I don't think we'll get a copyright strike for this. It's not the BBC or anything like that. So no, that's true. Thousands of years ago, on this planet we call Earth, our planet was visited by various groups of extraterrestrial humanoid beings. <laughs> Scientology. Ah, funny you should say that. They're they're not Scientologists, but recently. I was just reading this before. Recently, they have started to uh, adopt Dianetics. Oh, they, okay. claim, they claim they are not part of Scientology, and, and I believe them, but they have adopted Dianetics. Oh, so you, okay. you're not right. Um, is it? Uh, there's there's they, another group, isn't there, that believes in, um, that believes in aliens? They do, have a, uh, they do have a lot in common. No, no, they're not the Raelians. Not the Raelians. Oh, damn it. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that! <laughs> Keep going! Okay. These extraterrestrial humanoid beings had to leave their planet and seek refuge here on Earth because their home planet had been destroyed by evil. When these extraterrestrial humanoid beings arrived on Earth, they chose to take residence inside the center of the Earth. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is this real? Well, it's, it's not real, but people actually believe it. Yeah, uh, that's what I mean. <laughs> this is legit. Yeah, I, I, I hope that's what you meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I, 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 I'm actually, like, starting to accept this. This actually sounds plausible. <laughs> well, there, there are people who do, so, you uh, know. I guess. Because the surface of the Earth was inhabited by human beings. At this point in time in Earth's history, the human beings who lived on the surface of the Earth were all of one tribe the Ebonoid tribe. Since they live inside the Earth, these extraterrestrial beings have now become interterrestrial beings. 
The center of the Earth where these interterrestrial beings reside also contains an inner sun. The inner Earth has... Oh, the Hollow Earthers! A oh, Hollow Earth theory! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it's be much better than that. That's only part of it. Oh, my God. This is, this is interesting. <laughs> yep. It's been called by a going. variety of names by cultures around the world, including Shambhala by Buddhist, Agartha by Tibetans, Kurnuji by the ancient Mesopotamians, the Duat or Amintah by the ancient Egyptians, Hades or the Underworld by Europeans, Shivalba by the Mayans, and in modern times, the concept of the inner earth has given rise to what is called the hollow earth theory. Unbeknownst to many human beings, the activities of these beings which reside inside the earth has affected the course of human history and human development. The first and most noble of the beings which resides inside the earth is called the Shayuk. Compared to human beings, the Shayuk would be considered geniuses with exceptional intelligence, and telepathic and telekinetic abilities. Okay. The Shayuk- <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm... Just letting this sink in. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might need to. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you sent me this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> have a dark brown skin complexion, they are between 5 feet to 7 feet tall, and their heads, brains, and cranial capacity is much wider and larger than the average human. The Shayuk come to the Earth's surface occasionally to teach and to trade with certain tribes of human beings. The teachings of the Shayuk are so profound that when they come to the Earth's surface to teach, they are often called deities, gods, priests, prophets, messengers, and seers. And, and, and Spinosaurus kins. <laughs> and freaks with those big heads. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't have those anymore. Because, I, 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 uh, like I said, I, I, I'm one of them. Oh, that, are you? That's, yeah, that's why I'm a genius. Did, did, oh, this okay. not, did this not, like, register with you ever? I, this, I this think... Is, this um, is why, I, uh, this is why I I'm so... Super intelligent. I think this ideology. I think this ideology would say that you're not part of that race, uh, simply based on your skin color. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll get um, to that later. Though we'll get to that later. Oh God! <laughs> and because of this fact, the Shayuk have strict laws which limit the interaction of Shayuk tribal members' contact with the humans on the surface. The Shayuk commonly interact and have mixed in with the surface world humans called the Dinakil or Dunakil also known as the Afar people, in present-day Eritrea, Djibouti, Ethiopia, and Somalia. The chief of the Shayuk is named King Fyokor, and his daughter is named Princess Radiya, and two of his brothers are named Amo, and Yishak, who has always been jealous of his brother King Fyokor. King Fyokor's brother Amo had fallen in love with a surface-dwelling human female, and he would sneak to the surface world to visit her, and would also pass himself off to the surface-dwelling humans as a psychic and a magician, and for these acts, Amo was exiled to live on the surface, 20 miles outside of the present-day city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia. As long as the people in There's the inner earth spent most of Oh, okay. There's a big clue. Uh, okay, it has some, uh, okay uh, it has something to do with Islam, then. I I'm guessing. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. Oh, God. <laughs> okay of their life in the Let's inner earth, going. then they will not die. However, to be exiled to the surface world means a person from inner earth will eventually die like the mortals on the surface. In the caverns adjacent to the Shayuk, resides another group of nobles called the Sinin. The Sinin are also highly intelligent, but also have a fighting spirit. The Sinin are between 5 feet to 7 feet tall and have a variety of complexions from yellow to brown, and they are hairless and are most noted for their cone-shaped heads. The Sinin commonly interact and have mixed with surface world humans including the ancient Egyptians, the Almecs in present-day Central America, <laughs> the Mangatog people in the African Congo, and the Parkas people in Peru. <laughs> <laughs> That's their explanation. Not, not that the skull can act it is actually quite malleable and can be sort of like molded in that way. No, it's yeah, there, there was a, a custom I think in France for uh, some period of time where when a newborn was born they would wrap the head uh, with pieces of wood to actually extend the skull because it was a fashion thing for a while yeah and, and there was other cultures, yeah there were other areas where they would lots um, of cultures have done it too yeah, yeah. Put, put a bit of wood on top of the head to flatten the skull 
Yeah, but I mean, obviously, uh, people living in the centre of the Earth is a much better explanation. Yes, of course. <laughs> Fuck you, Occam's Razor! <laughs> Chief of the Sinin is named King Lamsa, and his daughter is named Princess Lucina, and his son is named Prince Atif. One of the wretched group of beings which resides inside the Earth is called the Samin. The Samin are grotesquely obese, pale, with long elephant-like noses, and are very negative and aggressive. Okay, well, we know what Angry Aussie is now. <laughs> I was thinking Dworkins, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, Dworkins as well. I think ang Angry Aussie, uh, yeah, there could be a bit of Angry Aussie. Um, uh, who else? Uh, who else would uh, fit this description? Randy Harper? <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> yeah, fat jokes. Woo. The Samin were actually the manifested evil grafted out of the Sinin on their home world prior to these beings arriving on Earth. Since the Samin were grafted out of the Sinin, it is the responsibility of the Sinin to police and keep in check the evil activities of the Samin. It is said that an American named Richard Sharpshaver encountered the Sinin and called them the Turos, meaning interrogative robot, and he also encountered the Samin and called them Duros, meaning detrimental robot. One day, the wretched Samin raided and invaded the village of the Shayuk, stealing food and terrorizing the Shayuk family. When King Fyokur found out about this invasion by the Samin, he sent a telepathic message to King Lamsa stating that the Sinin has neglected their responsibility to keep the Samin in check, because the Samin were currently raiding and invading the village of the Shayuk. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> this is, uh. Uh, I. I uh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> Still like... no idea? I, 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 I don't even... I... Uh... <laughs> I thought it might leave you a bit strange. Uh, I, I mean... Trust me, like, it, gets a, like, it gets a lot better than this. This is just the start. I, I mean, I, can I could believe that this is some sort of, like, myth from several thousand years ago. But... Okay... Uh, um... yeah, this group started... This group started... I'll give you some clues. This group started in... 1930, right? So a lot of this belief is uh, is based on their first leader, who was in office of this group for four years, and then he disappeared. Uh, I think he must have been taken to the center of the earth or something. And uh, then his successor, uh, who was in power till the till 75, I think it was, um, added to the uh, mythology. Okay. Yeah, and apparently when his after his death, his son took over, and there was a a big split where they went back to more traditional Islam. Um, I think that lasted for about three years, and then uh, I, I won't mention the name of the person because it would give it away. Uh, took over the group, and since then they've gone back to this belief. Okay. Yeah, now that the last person who I think is still the leader, um, if I mentioned his name, that would give it away. You would know the name. So I'm not going to mention it at the moment. I, but, uh, I'm guessing it must be some kind of terrorist group. No. Uh, uh, okay, no, it's not. Um, uh, no, I, although not... They, they have been accused of... Um, Taking part in a murder of a, a very famous member of this group. Oh, okay. It, it's unknown. It's unknown whether they they actually did take part in it, but they've been accused of it. Ooh, because, drama. Yeah, uh, if I if I mentioned his name, it would definitely give it away. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this particular person um, uh, split from the group and then was killed sometime afterwards in a very public manner. Ooh. Okay. So there was suspicion that the group were behind it. Hey, okay, should we move on? Because I'm yeah. liking this story. Upon receiving yeah, a telepathic message from King Fyokor, King Lamsa went with his brethren to the caverns of the Shayuk to stop the invasion by the Samin and to drive the Samin back to whence they came. 
After driving the Samin away from the lands of the Shayuk, King Mansa apologized to King Fulkor, but tension remained between the Shayuk and the Sinin for some time after the incident. In order to make peace between the Shayuk and the Sinin, King Mansa offered his daughter Princess Lysina to be a wife of King Fulkor. King Fulkor accepted the peace offering from King Mansa, and in turn offered his daughter Princess Radilia to be the wife of King Mansa's son Prince Atif, as was the custom, and there was peace in the land for some time between the two tribes of the Shayuk and the Sinin. However, King Mansa's daughter Princess Lysina was angered and outraged because she did not want her father to give her away to be the wife of the Shayuk King Fulkor. Princess Lucina felt like an outcast and out of place living amongst the Shayuk people, and she did not like living by the strict laws of the Shayuk people. Princess Lucina always wanted to marry a man from her own people the Sinin, and she did not want to be married to a Shayuk man. One day Princess Lucina, now the unhappy wife of King Fulkor, met Yashok, the jealous brother of King Fulkor, and they conspired together based on their hatred for King Fulkor to have an illicit sexual affair together behind the back of King Fulkor. Princess Lucina and Yashok would travel to the surface world to the home of Emo, the exiled brother of King Fulkor and Yashok, and it is here where they would have their illicit affair. This affair between Princess Lucina and Yashok went on for months with them sneaking back and forth from the inner earth to the surface world, and eventually Princess Lucina became pregnant. In her pregnant state, Princess Lucina would not return to the land of the inner earth, but would remain at the home of Emo, and Yashok would stay with her. It was here in the home of Emo. 20 miles outside of the present-day city of Mecca Saudi Arabia, where the child Yaqub was born to Yashok and Princess Lucina. The child Yaqub being part Shayuk and part Sinin, had an enormous head the size of two men, and he also had two brains. Knowing that they could not return to the inner earth because their affair <laughs> Okay! <laughs> he had two brains. And his head was the size of two men. Yep. Okay. I um, think they mean the size oh. of two heads. Oh, okay. I, I hope they mean that. Otherwise, you'd have a sore neck. Well, they're like super intelligent aliens. They've probably got like carbon fiber necks or something as well. <laughs> yeah, that's possible. Cyber necks or something. <laughs> Had now produced a child. Yashok and Princess Lucina decided to live and raise the baby Yakub for five years in the home of Ammo. 20 miles outside of the present-day city of Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Yaqub's father Yashok would work as a scientist and a priest amongst the humans on the surface calling himself by the title Mornuakan, the last high priest. Back in Inner Earth, Yashok and Princess Lucina had been missing for years, and eventually it was found out by King Fulkor about the affair between his wife Princess Lucina and his brother Yashok. King Fulkor ordered his soldiers to go to the home of his brother Ammo and arrest Yashok for his crime, and according to the laws of the Shayuk, Yashok was put to death. Princess Lucina's life was spared because she now had a child to take care of, but her punishment was to remain exiled oh, to the surface world living that? in the home. Yeah. The, the sentencing gap. <laughs> <laughs> it is, he gets put to death and she gets to live, so... It's very true. There we go. Yeah. So uh, apparently, apparently uh, these aliens came to Earth uh, 66 trillion years ago. By the way, I, I should I mention. Get, uh, trillion. Yeah, trillion. 66 trillion. Apparently. Yeah, like um, <laughs> almost 66 trillion years before the Earth was formed. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. And to never return to Inner Earth. Depressed about her inability to return home, overwhelmed by her new responsibility to raise a child, and saddened by the death of her lover Yashok, Princess Lucina kills herself by committing suicide. The five-year-old child Yakub, now an orphan, is raised by his uncle Emo, and the child Yakub is emotionally disturbed and rebellious because of the death of his parents. The child Yakub grows to hate his people the Shayuk and he also grows to hate all dark complexion people because he blames them for the death of his parents. <laughs> they made a racist! <laughs> yeah. Uh, but black people can't be racist, he's part black. Oh, yes they can. Wait until you see what's coming up. Oh god. The child Yakub desires to have his revenge when he grows up. Yakub starts school at the age of four, 
and is teased and mocked about the size of his head by the surface dwelling human children. This mockery and teasing about the size of his head that Yakub experienced as a child created low self-esteem, and further infuriated the already deranged Yakub fueling his desire for revenge. Yakub's uncle Emma would tell Yakub stories about the beings in the inner earth and how the Samin were the manifestation of the evil grafted out of Yakub's mother's family the Sinin. One day, when Yakub was six years old, he was playing with two steel magnets in the home of his uncle Emma, and Yakub noticed the magnetic power of attraction and repulsion that unlike attracts, and like repels. By observing this, Yakub was inspired with a determined idea to create a tribe unlike any of the people on the surface of the planet, and this unlike tribe would be weak and wicked, and attract the other tribes on the surface of the planet, and rule over them with the knowledge of tricks and lies for 6,000 years. Upon coming to this realization, Yakub looked up at his uncle Emo and said, Uncle, when I get to be an old man, I am going to make a people who shall rule you. Uncle Emo said, What will you make, someone to make mischief and cause bloodshed in the land? Yakub responded to his uncle Emo by saying, Nevertheless, uncle, I know that which you do not know, and it was at that moment, the boy Yakub first came into the knowledge of just who he was, born to make trouble, break peace, kill and destroy, and be the enemy to the Ebonoid people of Earth. Yakub knew in order to accomplish his plan he would have to study science, biology, and genetics. Yakub was a child prodigy in school, being exceptionally smarter than the surface dwelling humans he was going to school with, and by- Okay, so he's actually, uh, uh, so he, he's gonna just become a super genius scientist guy. Okay. Yep. That's, uh, he's the big head scientist. One of them, anyway. Oh, okay. Oh, there's another. Interesting. Yeah. By the age of 18, Yakub had finished all of the colleges and universities of his nation. While in college, Yakub was mocked and teased being called the big head scientist. After graduating from the colleges and universities of his nation, Yakub began to preach a new doctrine to the people in the city. Yakub called his new doctrine Tricknology and his holy book was called the Book of Tricknology at 120 degrees. Tricknology. <laughs> Okay, tr <laughs> wait, but what what like um, race of people is he teaching this to? Um, well, there's only only the black race on the earth. Oh, at this point, there's only uh, okay. So, what language yeah. are they speaking? Because it would would it be English? Would would he be using sort of like Latin and Greek um, uh, uh, what, um, suffixes? No, I, I assume that would be no. a, an English translation of, <laughs> of whatever of, language. Of, of, of yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah this is kind of <laughs> just just give it yeah give it a, a, a random give it a random name. Yeah, yep. technology. Okay. <laughs> Sounds legit. <laughs> Sounds legit. Yeah. Yakub taught that if people followed his doctrine, then they would be able to rule the world for six thousand years and make slaves out of everyone else on the earth. Yakub made such impressions on the people that many people began following him, the children who once mocked and teased Yakub were now requesting to be part of what he was teaching, the girls who once laughed at Yakub were now women who desired him. As Yakub's teachings spread, he made more and more converts to his new doctrine. It's, it's that hypergamy dough. So he, he became a cult leader, basically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this was the first poison Kool-Aid. So. <laughs> Fair play. The original. Yep. Yeah. This was when um, this, but they they hadn't made jugs yet, so you weren't born yet. No. <laughs> and the power of Yakub's doctrine began to intimidate the king of the surface-dwelling humans, who ordered to have Yakub and all of his followers thrown in prison. The police arrested all of Yakub's followers and put them in prison, and filled up all of the prison cells with Yakub's followers. However. There was not enough space to put all of Yakub's followers in jail, therefore there were still some people free who were spreading Yakub's teachings. The police notified the king that they did not have enough space for all of Yakub's followers, and at that point the king decided to go to Yakub's prison cell and negotiate a deal. <laughs> just like, just, just try and arrest everyone who follows the cult and then you run out of people. You, you run out of prison space. <laughs> yeah, so you thought that one through. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is getting interesting actually. The king went to visit Yakub in his prison cell and the king said, So you are Mr. Yakub. Yakub said, 
Yes I am. The king said, Yaku, I have come to see if we could work out some agreement that would bring about an end to this trouble. What would you suggest? Yakub said to the king, if you give me and my followers everything to start a civilization, and furnish us with money and other necessities of life for 20 years, I will take my followers and we will leave. The king was pleased with the deal offered by Yakub and agreed to take care of them for 20 years, and- What? <laughs> why did he just kill them? I mean, this was the ancient world, right? So Yeah, yeah it's just like, oh, oh, um, oh, a bunch of people are listening to you and following, uh, and following your new religion. Um, well, uh, I, I, I'm gonna get, I'm going to give you money to go, to make you go away. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Because that, well, that, that's the sort of thing that would happen in the ancient world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happened all the time. I know. Until Yakub's followers were able to go for themselves. After 20 years, the government began to make preparation for the exiling of Yakub and his followers. The king ordered everyone rounded up who was a believer in Yakub's doctrine, and they took them to the seaport and loaded them on ships. When Yakub and his followers departed there were a total of 59,999 followers plus Yakub making 60,000 total people on 100 ships. So they had enough, they had enough people, uh, they had enough ships to fit them on, but not enough mm. prison space. No. <laughs> but, but, I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm not sure if that, that makes sense. <laughs> Oh, but the rest of it does. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, the rest of it does. Uh, I, I'm just sort of, I, I'm just sort of trying to work out the logistics of this ancient society that may or may not have existed. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> Yakub and his fleet of ships departed from an area 20 miles outside of the present-day city of Mecca, Saudi Arabia, and set sail on the Red Sea and sailed all the way around the continent of Africa to go to their destination which was the area which is currently called the island of Patmos, or Palam, in the Aegean Sea. While on the ships sailing around Africa to get to the area which is currently called the island of Patmos, Yakub began the second part of his plan which was a eugenics human gravitation experiment. Even though all of the people on the surface of the earth were of one tribe, the Ebonoid tribe, there was still some variation within the Ebonoid tribe, and Yakub began to highlight these differences, and Yakub taught these people that they were special, because Yakub planned to use them to graft his new tribe. Okay, so he's going full eugenics now. <gasps> okay. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, if I remember correctly, this happened 6,000 years ago, <laughs> roughly. Okay. So there was only, only black people 6,000 years ago, and now he is going to use uh, eugenics to create the other races. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Yakub developed his theory by studying his own genetics under the microscope and noticing that there were two different genes in him, one gene that was dark from his father Yishak's family the Shayuk, and the other that was not dark from his mother Princess Lucina's family the Sinin. Yakub began to have children with the women on this ship, and the babies which were born that were a lighter complexion he would spare their life, but the babies which were born which were of a darker complexion, Yakub would have thrown overboard into the ocean. Yakub felt if he could successfully separate the darker gene from the lighter gene, then he could graft the ebonoid tribe into its last stage, which would be albinoid. Yakub planned to create a tribe of albinoids, which he discovered was weaker than the ebonoid gene, which would be unalike, to rule the ebonoid nation for 6,000 years. When Yakub's followers found out about his new wicked plan, and learned that he was killing and throwing babies overboard into the ocean, 95% of his followers lost their loyalty to Yakub and abandoned his mission and jumped ship. As Yakub's fleet of ships sailed around Africa, people who lost loyalty to his mission would jump ship into the areas which are now Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Djibouti, Somalia, Mozambique, Namibia, Senegal, Morocco, and Tunisia. 10% of the original 60,000 of Yakub's followers betrayed Yakub and jumped ship. 85% of the original 60,000 of Yakub's followers jumped ship because they were confused why he would do such a horrible thing, leaving only 5% of the original 60,000 of Yakub's followers who actually made it to their destination of the island of Patmos in the Aegean Sea. As king on his island, Yakub set up birth control and planned parenthood laws which would contribute to his plan of negative eugenics and genocide to breed. Birth control and planned parenthood. <laughs> 6,000 years ago. <laughs> 
Okay. Yep. Okay. His albinoid tribe. Yakub made it a law that only the lighter complexion people could have children. People with darker complexions were put to death, and when children were born, nurses were ordered to have the darker babies killed by pricking the brains with a sharp needle as soon as the child's head was out of the mother, but the lighter babies were allowed to live. Yakub's aim was to kill and destroy the ebonoid nation. Yakub would have the dead bodies of the darker babies fed to wild beasts, and if they could not find a wild beast to feed the bodies to, they would take the dead bodies of the babies to a cremator to be burned, this is the level of intense hatred Yakub had in his heart. This process went on for years on Yakub's island as Yakub trained his sons and grandsons to carry on his work after he died, Yakub died at the age of 150 years old from a brain tumor. As the father of Tricknology, <laughs> Yakub... <laughs> of course, that's what happens when you have two brains. You know? I know. Well, I, I mean, he is a like you increase, just, the, you yeah. increase the likelihood of a brain tumor. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, you double the likelihood. Yeah, you get, exactly. You, you have two brains. But okay. <laughs> Yakub taught his people a doctrine which would enable them to rule the world for six thousand years. Yakub also taught his people that God is a spirit and a spook and not a man, and Yakub was the founder of the doctrine that unlike attracts and like repels. After 200 years on Yakub's island, all of the darker babies had been done away with, and all babies were born of a new tribe called the Rubedoid tribe. After another 200 years, all babies were born of an even newer tribe called the Citronoid tribe. And finally, after another 200 years, which makes 600 years total, all the babies born on Yakub's island were of Yakub's desired albinoid tribe. It took 600 years to breed Yakub's albinoid tribe, and every imagination of their heart and all of their actions were wicked continuously. The evilness of the albinoids not only affected themselves, but also affected the other peoples of the world. Yakub's albinoids returned to the city where they were exiled from. Once back in the city, it took only six months for Yakub's albinoids to cause chaos and war amongst the ebonoid people. The king of the ebonoid people realized that it was Yakub's <laughs> albinoids who were causing all the trouble, and the king made a decree to drive Yakub's evil albinoids from amongst them. The king rounded up all of Yakub's albinoids and stripped them of their clothing, and put an apron on them to hide their nakedness, and sent his army with them across the desert to cross the burning sands into the place which is modern-day Europe. Yakub's albinoids were roped into the mountains and caves and the king's army would patrol the area to make sure Yakub's albinoids stayed in the mountains and caves for 2,000 years to ensure that these people are kept away from the ebonoid people. During this 2,000 year period living in the mountains and caves without anything to start civilization, Yakub's albinoids became shameless, and lost all sense of shame and started going nude, and in the- <laughs> What?! <laughs> So, so now we know where the American Indians come from and Asians and uh, yeah, and, and we know the where, evil white men. Yeah, and, and the evil white men. Um, yeah. Uh, and it, and uh, this this particular group also claims, from from what I've read on the internet, apparently they also claim that uh, gorillas are descended from white men. <laughs> so, so apparently the white men tried to. Uh, reverse what's been done here and go back to the their their black roots, and uh, the result was the gorilla. Okay. So. Okay. Take that evolution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Winter. They Still wore no animal skins for clothes and. I I actually don't know. I, I had a quick look at the chat before, and someone in the chat had got it, but uh, I'm, I'm still not going to tell you. Uh, I, we'll I'm... go on. And... Oh, what even is this? I... <laughs> Let's continue. I, I, I... <sighs> it's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. Um... It, it, it almost makes Scientology look rational. Yeah, it, it actually does grew hair all over their bodies and faces like all the other wild animals. Yakub's albinoids tamed the wolves and dogs to live in the caves with them, and after some time the dog held a high place among their family becoming their best friend. After 2000 years of living in the caves, the wickedness of Yakub's albinoids was observed, and an ebonoid man named Moshe was sent to civilize them. Moshe led Yakub's albinoids out of the caves, That's Moses, however by the once way. out of the caves, Yakub's albinoids killed Moshe. Free from the caves, 
Yakub's Albanoids went on a rampage throughout the earth conquering and subjecting the Ebonoid people, pitting one against the other using the idea of divide and conquer. Yakub's Albanoids began to execute Yakub's plan for them to rule the world for 6,000 years. A man named Mahamdu, attempted to teach Yakub's Albanoids to convince them to end their devilishment, however this was still 1400 years before the end of Yakub's Albanoids 6,000 year period of dominion over the earth. And so, Yakub's Albanoids ruled the so, earth. So that was, um, that was Muhammad, I'm guessing? Yeah, yep, uh, and the one before was Moses. Ah, uh, okay. Who apparently, I think, used dynamite against them. It, it <laughs> says here, oh, just looking at wiki, uh, this is... I'm sure it said something about using dynamite. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't find it at the moment, but yeah. I Makes just, perfect sense. Yes, this does. 6,000 years yeah. spreading their devilishment, evil, pain, suffering, and oppression to the Ebonoid people of the Earth as designed by the big head scientist Yakub. The events of Yakub occurred approximately 6,600 years ago, and the 24 wise elder scientists of the Inner Earth foresaw the birth of Yakub 15,000 years ago. This history, or future, of Yakub and his people was predicted and foretold by the 24 wise elder scientists of the Inner Earth 8,400 years before the birth of Yakub. The 24 wise elder scientists of the Inner Earth were aware of the birth of Yakub, and they were aware of the things Yakub would do before Yakub was even born. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but they didn't do anything to stop it, they just, you know... They just let it happen. The just 24 wise elder scientists of the Inner Earth predicted that in the year 8400, this man Yakub would be born, and when this man was born, he will change civilization and the world, and produce a new tribe of people, who would rule the original Ebonoid people for 6,000 years, from the 9,000th year to the 15,000th year. After the six What is that music in the background? <laughs> I got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, we're in the year fifteen thousand, so that's yeah. okay. Thousand-year yes. rule of Yakub's people. The Ebonoid people would give birth to one whose wisdom, knowledge, and power would be infinite. One whom the world would recognize as being the greatest and mightiest since the creation of the universe, and that Yakub's old, warring, wicked world would be removed and destroyed and the Ebonoid nation would be restored into power to rule forever and to establish a world of peace and- uh, Actually, I'm not sure if this music uh, in the background is um, copyrighted. Oh well. Who knows? Well, this video was on YouTube, so... Oh yeah, it's probably fine then. Righteousness. This might great be redeemer of something. the Ebonoid people who was predicted by the 24 wise elder scientists of the Inner Earth to bring balance back into the world, is known under many names, titles, and attributes including, he who has no equal, he who there never was anyone like, the supreme being, the mighty, the wise, the best knower, the light, the life giver, the guide, the all powerful, he who knows how to reproduce the universe and the people of his choice. But his mother calls him Yashmal. Yashmal was the son of Princess Radiya of the Shayuk family, and Prince Atif the Sinin family. Yashmal's parents, Princess Radiya and Prince Atif, married each other in order to establish peace between their two quarreling tribes. However, uh, the also this is the other. This is the other. Um, the other arranged couple. marriage. Yeah. yeah but the, the funny thing is, right? They're two different types of alien, obviously, but they can mate with each other. Uh, yeah. It's strange. I, yeah. Maybe they come from the same planet or something. Yeah. Ma knows? Maybe they haven't. Uh, they haven't genetically diverged enough. But then again, um, yeah. This is this. This is from a group of people that clearly don't understand biology well enough to realize that. Gorillas are not related. Uh, are are um, are not descendants of humans. So, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> that that's a point. <laughs> and doesn't that has, doesn't that also mean that white people are also descendants of um, of this uh, big head scientist guy? Because at least some of them are uh, were um, created uh, were his children. Uh, uh, at least at the start. Yeah, that, that's a point. Yeah, so, so, but. The thing is, all the good is um, taken out of them. It's only the bad that's left. Apparently. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, we. Yeah, uh, like, white, like white those, people are so evil. Like, like the fat ones in the middle of the earth with the trunks. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Union of Princess Radiya and Prince Atif was more than mere chance. Their union was specifically guided, selected and arranged by the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth who were also genetic engineers. 
They knew that the offspring of the union between Princess Radiya and Prince Atif would be the personification of order to balance out and offset the chaos of Yakub, who was the offspring of Yashak and Princess Lusana. Yashmal began his education on the day he was born, as is the custom amongst members of the Shayuk. It would be unheard of for a member of the Shayuk to wait until the age of four to start school unless the child was mentally handicapped. Being part Shayuk and part Sinin, Yashmal's head was noticeably larger than the other members of the Shayuk and Sinin. Yashmal had an enormous head, two brains, and a third enlarged pineal gland which sat in the center of his two brains. Let, let's face it, he probably also will get brain tumors. <laughs> I love the veins on his head. Yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway, let's go on. Yeah. Making the top of his head appearing to be shaped like three orbs. Amongst the Shayuk and Sinin, Yashmal would be called the big head scientist. However, amongst these tribes, this statement was not taken to be an insult, but rather a compliment, alluding to the individual's intelligence in the same way that saying big muscles alludes to an individual's strength. Since Yashmal was raised in his native land amongst his people who looked like him, he did not suffer from the same ridicule, mockery, and low self-esteem which plagued his cousin Yakub who grew up in a foreign land amongst other than self and kind. As a child, Yakub just needed Yashmal... a safe space, that's all. Oh, of course, yes. Um... Yeah, he he needed um, he he just needed to have a a, a way um, some way to sort of like maybe a hashtag that would fight the microaggressions <laughs> that would solve everything. Well, there wouldn't be any white people, evil white people around if he just had a safe space. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh well. It, he he should have just fired all the white people. Uh, he should have just fired all the um, all the kids. That, that made fun of him, that would have solved everything. That's true. Let's, let's mm. face it. Then there wouldn't be any uh, any white devils. Was an exceptional like prodigy and a genius. Yashmal was also told stories of the evil activities which transpired at the hands of his cousin Yakub. One day, when Yashmal was nine years old, he was playing with two electromagnets in the home of his grandfather King Fyokor and noticed that electrons flowing in the same direction through two electromagnets would create the magnetic phenomenon of attraction, and that electrons flowing in opposite directions through two electromagnets would create the magnetic phenomenon of repulsion. By observing this, Yashmal realized that like flowing energies create attraction and unlike flowing energies create repulsion. Thus, Yashmal was inspired with a determined idea to direct the flow of mental energy of the ebonoid people of the planet in the same direction so that the ebonoid people of the planet will be unified again to be strong and righteous, and bring peace and balance back to the earth forever. Upon coming Sounds to this legit. realization, okay. Yashmal looked up at his grandfather King Fyokor and said, Grandfather, when I get older, I am going to make a people strong and righteous, and I will eliminate the devilishment which has come into the world to show and prove real power and wisdom, and bring back peace and supreme balancement forever. Grandfather King Fyokor said, What will you make, someone to establish order and cause harmony in the world? Yashmal said, Man plans, and I plan, and surely I am the better planner. And it was at that moment, the boy Yashmal first came into the knowledge of just who he was, born to establish order, bring peace, build, create, and be the redeemer to the ebonoid peoples of Earth. It is common for members of the Shayuk tribe to finish all of the coursework taught in all of the colleges and universities of the surface world by age 9, but Yashmal finished by age 7. If it took a member of the Shayuk tribe until age 18 to finish all of the coursework taught in all of the colleges and universities of the surface world, then that person would surely be looked at as being mentally handicapped or mentally retarded. Yashmal finished all of the advanced universal sciences which are taught by the schools in the inner earth by the time he was age 12 even though it is common to finish this coursework by age 15, but Yashmal was a genius and a prodigy. After finishing school, Yashmal met with the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth and told them of his intention to travel to the surface world as a bringer of peace and redeemer of the ebonoid people. Yashmal was tried and tested by the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth, and once found worthy, at age 18, Yashmal traveled to the area presently known as the Mwanza region near the countries of Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya in Africa. Yashmal called his new doctrine Teachnology and his holy book was called the Book of Teachnology of 720 Degrees. Teachnology. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this... Um, what is this? Just just tell me right now, I don't even... Uh, it's uh, it's uh, like Nation of Islam. Nation of Islam. Yep. 
What? It's the Nation of Islam. Okay. So it was founded <laughs> in 1930 by Wallace Fard Muhammad, who uh, disappeared four years later. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it was continued by Elijah Muhammad, who died in 75. Uh, his son took over and tried to, uh, I think, redeem it and take it back to you know, proper Islam as opposed to, <laughs> to this. this garbage. And uh, then Louis Farrakhan came along, and um, I think it was in 78. Okay. Uh, and, to this. Uh, and they came back to this. Yeah, and I think Farrakhan is still the leader, and from memory, he is now promoting um, Dianetics. Okay. <laughs> this is so, yeah. Um, okay. I, 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 I don't. I, I'm lost for words. <laughs> it is a bit that way. I thought you might be. <laughs> That's why I thought it'd be funny to. Uh, to not tell you what this was about and just um, record your reaction. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a really, this has been a really great live stream. I've just been like here, just like what the hell, what the hell, <laughs> what is this? I, I probably came across this about three or four years ago, and I, I think my reaction was very similar to yours. <laughs> so, yeah. But it, it, uh, so then, I, I, I'm guessing this guy somehow manages to found. Uh, the Nation of Islam, like, somehow, I don't know. Well, this is some um, Redeemer. He's obviously the opposite of the, the oh. other guy. The oh, oh, yeah. guy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it, you know, it's all to do with magnets, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> all to do with magnets. Yep. Fucking magnets! How do they work? How would they work in the center of the Earth? Uh, that, that would would they still work? Yeah, yeah, they should work. But uh, also, you got to remember, you got to remember, there isn't a um, there isn't necessarily the sort of like magnetic iron core uh, in, in their view because they don't necessarily believe that bit. They believe there's a sun in the middle. Hmm. So um, I'm guessing. Uh, whatever interference would actually be caused by the iron core is not actually. It it, it doesn't matter. That that's a point. So magnets shouldn't work at all. In other words, I I don't even know. And he had like electromagnets, and the other guy had magnets, just just normal magnets. Ah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I I don't know. Well, actually, magnets should still work, but yeah, the they, Earth's magnetic field wouldn't exist. Yeah, so. well, uh, who gives a fuck about the, the uh, magnetic field? That's just uh, uh, that's just science. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's technology. <laughs> <laughs> that's technology. <laughs> Perfect. Love it. Um, yeah, because that's white people science. It, it sounds it. like something someone would come up up come up with on a like a, a comedy show or something is it, it sending it up like, a, a cult. It sounds like something a kids show would come up with trickology and teachology. <laughs> like uh, this, I, uh, I I I don't even know. But that, that sentencing gap as well, that was just, that was just completely bullshit, let's face it. And, and, and she still killed herself, so, like, what was the point? Yeah, was, well, if she hadn't killed herself, maybe he, um, it would have been alright, you know, maybe he wouldn't have created the, the white devil. <laughs> Actually, that's a point, they, they knew this was going to happen, what, uh, 1500 years or 15,000 years or whatever beforehand. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, they still, yet they still killed his father. Which yeah. triggered the whole thing. Yeah. Hashtag triggered. <laughs> yeah, they, they, Hashtag 
Hashtag technology. <laughs> so they're responsible for creating the white devil and, and gorillas. Yeah. Um, it, th does this video like go on to explain their reasoning for that? I, I can't remember. Uh, let, let's play a little bit more. See where, because we're over halfway through. We've yeah. done all right. Yeah, we, we well, it, it, we haven't like been respond. Uh, we haven't really been responding to individual points because it's not really one of those <laughs> sorts of things. <laughs> Otherwise, we probably would have uh, like we, we'd still be like two minutes in. <laughs> Which was I think it question? speaks for itself. Yeah, it does. That's that's the point. That we don't yeah. need to. <laughs> it, it, it's difficult to actually comment on it because it's just. Wow. Okay. Answer format designed to get the mental energies of the listeners flowing in the same direction, which would in turn create unity, harmony, and attraction amongst kindred. Yashmal's new doctrine was so powerful that he had millions of people from all of the tribes on the earth coming to hear his message and aspiring to be a part of his mission. However, from the millions of followers that he gained on the surface of the earth, Yashmal only selected 144,000 which he called the chosen few, to be a part of the next phase of his plan, and when Yashmal and his chosen few departed, he told the people on the surface of the earth he would be back in one day. So Yashmal selected 41,150 ebonoid females and 41,140 ebonoid males for a total of 82,290 people from the original ebonoid tribe. Yashmal selected 10,285 rubedoid females and 10,285 rubedoid males for a total of 20,570 people from the rubedoid tribe. Who, who are the rubedoids? Because I'm guessing... Um... Uh, American Indians, I think. I think oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense now. Yeah, uh, and... Uh, um... And, of course, they were in Mecca, uh, of course. Yeah. Um... <laughs> okay. Yashmal selected 10,285 citronoid females and 10,285 citronoid males for a total of 20,570 people from the citronoid tribe. And Yashmal selected 10,285 albinoid females and 10,285 albinoid males for a total of 20,570 people from the albinoid tribe, which made 144,000 people total. Yashmal took his followers into the inner earth through an opening beneath the Great Lake in the present-day area known as the Mwanza region in Africa to begin his eugenics genetic engineering experiment of grafting the various tribes of people on the earth back into the original ebonoid tribe. Ah, uh, this, this is how they create Muslims, I'm guessing. Or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the chosen people or something. Yeah, um... Because, cause I, 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 I mean, um... Sort of like, I guess, or maybe it's, it creates Arabs. Because um, they're not they're not exactly black, are they? They're kind of uh, they're, they're a little lighter skinned than um, the, than than black people, but they are um, so so maybe they they think that they're like a little bit of everything. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think the Nation of Islam believes that. Um, I'm just trying to find it on Wiki. I think they believe that the American blacks originated uh, in Asia so that by that they would mean uh, the Middle East what we call the Middle East these days okay so I, I, uh, I think that's why when the boat was going around Africa they dropped off all the different people so apparently human race didn't originate from Africa they they came from Middle East Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia okay Fair enough. Being a master genetic engineer who was all wise, right, and exact, knew that it was not necessary to kill anyone in order to accomplish his goal because he had knowledge of the science of dominant and recessive genes. Knowing that the Ebonoid tribe was the first, then Yashmal knew the Ebonoid gene would be the most dominant, followed by the Rubedoid gene, followed by the Citronoid gene, and lastly followed by the Albinoid gene. While inside the inner earth with his followers, Yashmal applied the science of dominant and recessive genes to design and engineer a system of arranged marriages by which the offspring born from each arranged marriage would have certain desirable qualities, and in time over a period of 900 years, all of the derivative tribes would have been grafted back into the original Ebonoid tribe. Yashmal also observed that the gene of the Ebonoid woman was the most dominant gene, and so Yashmal established the following rules of arranged marriages amongst his followers. 
10,285 ebonoid women and 10,285 ebonoid men would marry to keep the ebonoid gene strong and pure. 10,285 ebonoid women would marry 10,285 rubenoid men. 10,285 ebonoid women would marry 10,285 citronoid men. 10,285 ebonoid women would marry 10,285 albinoid men. 10,285 ebonoid men would marry 10,285 rubenoid women. Uh, this is very specific. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, must, must be real then. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I mean... Just like Game of Thrones, yeah. <laughs> uh, I I I just um I just watched every single series of Game of Thrones a few uh, about a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, uh, you hadn't seen them before? No, I, I, well I, I'd only seen like the first season. Okay, you haven't read the books? No, I haven't. So oh, so now are, but now so I'm up to date. Yeah. Now I'm up to date, and I'm I'm uh, and then just like uh, and then just about a week ago the um, season six trailer came out. So like. Yeah, that was quite cool. I'm um, I, I've read all the books and I'm re-listening to them on audiobook when I'm out exercising. So I'm up to book three. Fair enough. Yeah, they're very long books, but well worth it. Okay. TV 10, show is great. Two hundred eighty-five. Better. Fair enough. Of Evanoid men would marry ten thousand two hundred eighty-five citronoid women. Uh, it is that I uh, I don't know why the, the ten thousand two hundred eighty-five. I yeah, the, I think it's is it, uh, isn't very it specific numbers, isn't it? Yeah, like, you notice with um, Yakub it was always six, six something, six something something. Yeah, like uh, sixty thousand or six or six thousand years, six hundred years, yeah. 600 yeah. Years, yeah. Yeah, uh, and now it's ten thousand two hundred eighty-five, wasn't it? Um, wait, wait, hang on a minute. Is that a um, is is that a factor of one hundred forty-four thousand or something? Oh, I've got no idea. Uh, I don't know. Actually, uh, I've got a calculator. I'm just going to. Does it matter? <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just gonna. <laughs> two eight five. No, it's not. It's not even a fucking factor. So, so you have found the the one flaw in their argument. Yeah, like it doesn't even add up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unless there are going to be people that don't fuck. I don't Probably. know. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go. Let's let's move on. 10,285 ebonoid men would marry 10,285 albinoid women. Yashmal would also keep 10 ebonoid women as wives for himself. Oh, okay. The men and women were required to get married by age 19, and each couple were to have two children. Living in the inner earth where he was from, Yashmal was continuously regenerated and rejuvenated and did not die like his cousin Yakub on the surface of the earth. Yashmal was able to teach, socialize, laugh, play with the children, enjoy life and observe the generations and progression of his followers over the centuries. The offspring of the ebonoid woman and the ebonoid man would always be ebonoid. The offspring of the ebonoid woman and the rubenoid man would also be ebonoid because of the strength of the ebonoid woman's genes. The offspring of the ebonoid woman and the citronoid man would be ebonoid 75% of the time, and rubenoid 25% of the time, because of the strength of the ebonoid woman's genes. The offspring of the ebonoid woman and the albinoid man would be ebonoid 75% of the time, and citronoid 25% of the time, because of the strength of the ebonoid woman's genes. The offspring of the ebonoid man and the rubenoid woman would be ebonoid 75% of the time. The, 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 uh, there's, there's one kind of flaw with this, and it's to do with how... The only one? Yeah, well, uh, I, I mean, the, the, the um, race is actually determined by, like, Tons and tons and tons of genes that are all um, that are all like dominant and recessive in, uh, um, in like multiple ways. <laughs> so this doesn't make any sense, like biologically. No, no, come on, come on, come on. If an if an African woman marries an Asian man, their offspring are American Indian. That's just that's basic genetics, isn't it? <laughs> 
it's teach knowledge genetics right there 101 <laughs> yeah well I, I, I'm I'm working with my trick knowledge aren't I um, uh, <laughs> that's the problem yeah that, that, that trick knowledge that says there's like 25 different genes just for hair and eye colour they're actually connected but um, that's oh. just crazy white man stuff so <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, the evil white man. With the evil you. white man. Yeah. And Rubenoid 25% of the time. The offspring of the Ebonoid man and the Citronoid woman would be Rubenoid. The offspring of the Ebonoid man and the Albinoid woman would be Citronoid. With the loss of arranged marriage. Well, uh, white people and black people, when they uh, when they have um, when they have kids, they're always Chinese. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yes. <laughs> okay. Are you saying they're wrong? Are you saying he's wrong? No, oh, I, I'm just learning. That's, that's I'm just racist. learning this. <laughs> Urges in place. It would take Yashmal's chosen 144,000 people 46 generations over the course of 900 years to be grafted back into the original Ebonoid tribe. During this time, for some generations recessive genes would tumble forward. After 12 generations, all of the albinoids had been grafted back into the citronoid, rubenoid, and ebonoid tribes. After another 16 generations, all of the citronoids had been grafted back into the rubedoids and ebonoids. After another 18 generations, all of the rubedoids had been grafted back into the ebonoids, leaving only the original ebonoid tribe. Yeah, but then, um, aren't there still existing recessive genes? Like, what do they do with those? Do they, they work out who has the recessive genes so that they, like, they never show up again? That's what technology just wants us to believe. So, <sighs> yeah, of course. He's got two brains and and huge throbbing veins on his head, so it must yeah. be right. He's got some kind of gland as well, because they said it was some kind of <laughs> gland that like makes it look yeah. like there's a third orb, and that that gland must uh, must do something that prevents this from being a problem. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, you uh, know, Jacob, the the first one, the one oh, yeah, that created yeah. the evil white man. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, he was the first MRA. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. He he had a giant fedora to hide his two brains. <laughs> I love this. You watch. I, it'll be an article on, on We Hunted the Mammoth tomorrow, no doubt. Oh God, white niggers <laughs> always fucking shut up. <laughs> Okay. White plus black equals grey. Shouldn't they be ashnoids? Yes. Yes, they should. <laughs> they should be ashnoids. Or dustnoids. Uh, let, let's continue. Yeah, okay. That after four generations, if the albinoids refused to mix in, then they would be unable to conceive offspring after the fourth generation. After eight generations, if the citronoids refused to mix in, then they would be unable to conceive offspring after the 8th generation. After 16 generations, if the rubedoids refused to mix in, then they would be unable to conceive offspring after the 16th generation. Just like electrons flowing from atoms with more electrons to atoms with fewer electrons, it was necessary for the derivative tribes to mix back into the original ebonoid tribe in order to get recharged and sustain and maintain their existence. However, because of the science of recessive and dominant genes, by mixing back into the original ebonoid tribe, the derivative tribes would eventually be grafted back into the original ebonoid tribe in time leaving only the original ebonoid tribe on the surface of the planet. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. And so Yashmal smiled at this fact now having knowledge that the evil acts done by his cousin Yakub would be reversed just by letting nature take its course. The process of grafting the derivative tribes back into the original ebonoid tribe took 900 years, and once completed, Yashmal took another 100 years to teach and train his followers how to control and conquer the evil which existed within themselves, rather than attempting to graft the evil out letting it manifest and personify as a being. After the 1000 year period with Yashmal in the inner earth, Yashmal returned to the surface of the earth to the area presently known as the Mwanza region in Africa with 144,000 ebonoid people. When Yashmal and his 144,000 followers returned, the people on the surface of the earth said, Yashmal, you said you would be gone for one day, and you were true to your word, you have only been gone for one day, but many of the people you have returned with are not the same people you left with. What have you done with our brothers and sisters? 
One of the Ebonoid women named Kidara who was one of Yashmal's wives and one of the 144,000 spoke up and said, I am a daughter and great descendant of your brothers and sisters which it seems to you left with Yashmal just yesterday, but we have been with Yashmal in the inner earth for 1,000 years, and Yashmal has taught us the science of genetics and how to rid the world of evil, as well as how to conquer the evil within ourselves. Yay, time travel! <laughs> so the inner earth is like a TARDIS. Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of like a, it, it slows down time. I get, uh, I guess time time goes yeah. faster there or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Yashmal spoke and said, "Indeed, one day in the inner earth can be like one thousand years." Yashmal's one hundred forty-four thousand followers then proceeded to teach the Evanoid people on the surface of the earth the way to defeat the evil currently plaguing the earth in the same way that Yashmal had taught them. Yashmal returned to the inner earth with his Evanoid wife Kidara. After returning to the inner earth, Yashmal was elected to a seat as one of the twenty-four wise elder scientists of the inner earth. Yashmal taught Kidara the secret to eternal life and they had many children together. Yashmal told Kidara that the Ebonoid woman is the human representative of nature on the surface of the earth, and thus the Ebonoid woman is the key to destroying the evil plaguing the surface of the earth, and she is the key to bringing peace and balance back to the surface of the earth. Yashmal told Kidara that it was not him who the 24 wise elder scientists of the inner earth had prophesied about, it was her, the Ebonoid woman. Yashmal told Kidara that he was merely a conduit to allow her to bring balance back to the earth, and so while the big head scientist Yashmal's followers execute his plan on the surface of the earth, Yashmal and Kidara wait with their family in the inner earth for the hereafter, that is to say, here on earth, after evil has been removed, and peace and balance has been restored. Um, okay? So, what, they're just sort of waiting now, until... Yeah, I, I think we've seen enough of this video. I think yeah, I, I think we have seen enough. Do you, do you want to have a quick look at a, another video from um, the Nation of Islam? I think. Yeah, is, let, let, uh, let's let's go because this is. This I think this is Farah Khan. I, I'll send it to you in um, on Skype so you can load it. This, this I haven't watched this video, so I've no idea how bad it's going to be or how. Who knows? It might be good, but I, I get the feeling it's going to be bad. Going by the title. Yeah, uh, right, um... So I sent it, sent it to you on Skype. Yeah, okay. Give me a sec. Um, origin of the white man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sure it's harmless. I'm sure there's nothing yeah, it's... offensive in it whatsoever. Yeah. Well, don't worry. Muslims can't be racist. Oh, this is this is long. I just realised this is like an hour and twenty-four. <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't, I don't think we'll watch the whole thing. No, let's, let's not watch, watch the whole thing. thing. Maybe jump. Maybe we jump like twenty minutes into it or something. Yeah, should we just randomly ju uh, jump twenty minutes into it? Let's yeah, just, just just see what we find. Let's go twenty minutes in. We want we want Farrakhan talking. There he is. All right. So I am a Bolivian. I am a Chilean. Huh? I am a Brazilian, I am a Colombian, I am a Venezuelan. Nobody uses America but these who live in the 50 states. And how did you become an American? When did you become an American? Under what circumstances have you become an American? Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. They, they were Maybe born there? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, should we jump ahead a little bit more, because that's, uh... The Bible in the book of Psalms said, Ye are all gods, children of the Most High God. So for the white man to tell you that you're a Negro, a colored person, a ham bone, a shine, a burrhead, all the or nigger whatever these names are that he calls you when you know yourself you're not offended by the name nigger i know what a nigger is this is so this is so oh god he's he's actually saying don't be triggered by the word nigger <laughs> oh, i i okay i'm i'm actually 
I'm actually not. Um, this isn't actually that bad. Bane, you got you got you got to get but better at triggering. We've watched it. all of thirty seconds of it though. So I know, I know, but it, it's I'm, a good thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I agree with you, racism is wrong, but... Yeah, racism is, yeah, racism is wrong. all forms of racism is wrong. Yeah, racism... Well, what he's saying is, racism is wrong, and that... Don't be offended by it, though. Because, like... It, it, it doesn't actually have, like, an effect on you. I, I'm... Oh, fucking hell, I'm being very charitable to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't got nothing to do with you and me. So, if you want to use the term African-American, that is entirely up to you. But you should never use that term to negate yourself as a black person. Because it was blackness that brought us into consciousness in the 1960s. It's not just a color. What? I think he's talking about the... The civil rights? Well, the, the, some, some people don't like the term black. Some people use the term African-American. Um, yeah, I... I, I, don't, I, think it, I think it changes from generation to generation, so... Yeah, what, what becomes offensive is just, like, what was said 30 years ago, I, basically. Whenever I hear someone say, people of colour... Right, it, it, that sounds racist to me because it sounds to me like the the term coloured or coloured. Oh, actually, uh, yeah, I got. Um, let me. Um, uh, I, I know it's not used in a racist way, but to me, it sounds like it's a, a racist term because it, it sounds like a term which was used uh, in a racist manner. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I I had a picture here. Um, oh yeah, here here we are. Um, let me just um, go to. Uh, I'm just going to sort of screen cap it, so so you'll see it on the you'll see it on the, the stream, but you won't. Um, uh, yep. And there we go. Um, yeah, I, I I made that. Um, this this is a uh, this is this is my view on um, safe spaces. I'm just. Screen oh, I'm sharing. still waiting for it to come up. The screen's just black at the moment. Oh, yeah, you can see it on the Hangout if you want. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm looking. Um, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, that's, Basically, that's my point. hashtag safe spaces. Yeah. Yeah. But, um... Well, it's interesting how terms change like that. It is. It really is. But the, uh... Because calling someone coloured is othering them, isn't it? Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, and I was saying people of color. People of color is also othering in a way. So no, no, it, it's just it's just acknowledging I'm, I'm happy, oppression. I'm happy, I'm happy to call a group whatever they want to be called. To be honest, it doesn't really bother me. Yeah, but, it uh, does, yeah, it doesn't either. It's just uh, it, it it's just it just sounds a little regressive, is all. I I often use African American because I I think it's probably the most. Um, Acceptable, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, I tend to be quite egalitarian. I say black and white and Asian, because that, that that seems to that yeah. Seems I, to make I think more I sense. use black sometimes too. It, it really depends, because a lot of the time they're not African American. They might be from. Um, uh, oh, well, they might uh, be like. Obviously, I'm talking about yeah. blacks in America. Well, no, but even e no, but even if they're e even if they're black and American, they might be from like the Caribbean or something. So. They aren't actually from Africa, so to call them African American isn't exactly. Um, it's not accurate. Yeah, but they they still would have come from Africa originally, though. Yeah, I guess, but uh, I, I have heard that's that's <laughs> also <laughs> that's also know. kind of anti PC because I, I heard like there was a teacher that got, um, they got um, like some kids got pissed off at a teacher for saying that they were African American when they were from the Caribbean, and, and yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, but then again, I, I heard sometime last year that apparently the the saying "chinks in your armor" is now oh yeah <laughs> ra racist against Asian. 
That's also I th from memory that was in the UK. It was part of some military uh, manual or something. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't even know. Consciousness. It's not just a color. It is a calling. Huh? And white folks felt so threatened by our calling ourselves black and identifying with black people all over the world. He wanted to change us from calling ourselves black, so he subtly changed the name. Called us minorities. Tinfoil hat it is. <laughs> well, yeah, this, this whole uh, big head scientist stuff should be put in the same basket as David Icke, as far as I'm concerned. It should be put in the same basket as fucking Monty Python. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, I love Monty Python. <laughs> but that was quite entertaining, though. Yeah, but it's not meant to be taken uh, yeah. seriously. Yeah, <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> that's the point. Like, it, 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 it's intentionally bullshit. I think, I, think that's, I, I think that's probably what happened. Is whoever like created the nation of Islam was like, okay, if I make it so out there and crazy that when I say it, uh, like people would think he I he has to be right because he said because uh, otherwise he wouldn't think he'd be able to get away with saying it. I, well, what about the Raelians? They they're a unique bunch. A lot of people don't know about the Raelians. Yeah, I've heard really much heard, about them. I've only heard a little bit about them. But they, they, um, okay, so apparently they were started in. I'm going from memory here, so hopefully I'll get everything right. Um, apparently they were started in France by a French journalist called Rayol or something like that. That thus the name Raylian. Ah, okay. And he believes he believes that his father was an alien, uh, and and this alien also was the father of Jesus. So he's the half brother of Jesus. So it, it's kind of like a, a weird branch of Christianity mixed with the X Files. It's um, it's rather bizarre. Okay. And I remember years ago they were trying to raise money to build a uh, a base on an island so a UFO could actually land, which is strange because you know a, a UFO travels tens of thousands of uh, light years to to get to Earth, and they forget to put landing gear on the UFO <laughs> you think it just landed like a, a football field somewhere or something but apparently they have to build a special base for it to land so um, ah, okay they're an interesting bunch yeah and don't, didn't they want like funding so that they could do it at what point yeah yeah I don't know get... what happened with it I think they just disappeared I think it still exists Pretty sure oh yeah, but I don't think I don't think anyone takes any notice of them. Mm. I uh, sent you another link on Skype too. This might be a better one. It's a shorter oh. video, so hopefully it gets to the point a lot quicker. Because I, I think this one will be looking at that for hours trying to find something interesting. Yeah. Above top secret. You know that's going to be good just by itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like better than top secret. That's yeah. Someone in the Pentagon left the filing cabinet open with all the Illuminati secrets, and now it's on the internet. No, no, no. Everyone, like it, this, this, this stuff is kept, this kept. This stuff is kept away from the Pentagon. Like they don't even know uh, that's it. it. That, that's bunker, it's above top bunker. secret. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's above top secret. secret. Bunker. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look. I haven't seen this, by the way, so hopefully it's good. Okay. That's which you do not know. <laughs> <laughs> the spooky music. Yep. It's great. Origins of white supremacy revealed. <laughs> this is obviously technology here. Yeah. 
This really is. This is this is actually really awesome. <laughs> the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says when the scientists went out and sampled the thinking of the people, they saw that in the year 8,400 of this present cycle, a man would be born named Yaqub. Born with a determined idea to make a new people. On this earth, a new people that would be strange and different from any people that had ever been on this planet before. <laughs> and that this people that he would make would rule with a contrary civilization that would wreak havoc on the earth. And when they brought their- Oh, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> White people are responsible for Chernobyl. I guess. <laughs> well, technically, I, I guess. Yeah. I guess actually, yeah, because it was it was um it was Russian. Um. So yeah. Are you saying people of color did it? Is that what you're claiming? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that is. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm blaming. Because uh, what I, I keep hearing is, um, yep. especially from sort of like feminists and social justice types, is you blame Group X for something, or or, or for everything if they're straw manning. Therefore, mm. you hate Group X. So, um, and I think this is, I, I think to an extent, and sometimes, sometimes we're not even blaming Group X. No. We're just talking about an issue, and they assume that it must be. Yeah, we, we must be blame, uh, blaming Group X for that. Yeah, but but what I mean is, um, it, it's I think there is at least um, it, it's not necessarily always hate. I think there is bigot, um, but it does tend to require some level of bigotry to blame a demographic uh, as a collective for some kind mm. of crime. Um, so when they so um, I think. The next time uh, you hear a social justice warrior say, "Oh, you're just blaming feminism for um, for for your issues," uh, uh, and then they'll, they'll they'll probably say something like, "Well, let, let's face it, the real problem is men. That the men are the um, are the cause of all the real problems in the world." I'm like, okay, but uh, and and here it's it's white people are responsible for all the problems in the world. But yeah, well, white white people, a conversation I've had numerous times now is uh, someone will say uh, men already have all their rights and I will say something like what about the right to bodily integrity and then they will respond with well feminism isn't to blame for that or women aren't to blame for that I, I never said they were <laughs> I never claimed that women or feminism were responsible for circumcision I'm just bringing it up as a fucking issue but apparently you can't talk about an issue with, without blaming or the we, other group. Yeah. So it, if men have issues, apparently it has to be caused by women because that's the way they think. Because they, they think all women's issues are caused by men. So it has to be the opposite. It can't be society in general. It can't be you know, attitudes in society. No, it has to be the, the other group which is doing it. it. It's a very interesting way of looking at the world. It really is, yeah. It's it's the out group that is the problem, and it, it's always the out group, which is just. Uh, should should we keep should we keep going? Yeah, let's let's see what what they've got to say. Back to Allah, the judge. He looked at it. He could have said, "We don't want this." He said. Let it be. Why are you going to allow all this suffering? Because it's going to manifest human nature to its fullest. And it will test the people under evil to see whether evil is as productive in their lives as good. So, that at the end so, of this so this is above top secret. Right? Yeah. This is above top secret. 
So are we going to get in trouble for showing this on YouTube? Um, uh, are the people watching it at the moment going to get knocks on the door in the, on their doors in the middle of the night from men in dark suits? White people in dark suits. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, then again, I think we're obviously, white. Obviously, I think we're white people, so we already know all this. That this is only above top secret for everyone else. Um, oh, that that could be true, but I I don't know this. So I'm white. Liar. You knew this. <laughs> Let's go on. Men, each of them will know that evil is not the way that they should go. But you must choose righteousness. And the only way you will choose righteousness voluntarily is that you must suffer enough under evil. But the evil that you see in operation Ultimately, you must come to know that it springs from your set. Uh, I, I'm guessing he's trying to, like, make out that only white people have ever done bad things. Obviously. I mean, just look at history. It's always I white know. people, isn't it? Genghis Khan? Uh, yeah, that, he was, that Arab he was slave white. trade. And... Yeah. <sighs> All, all those, uh, all those like civil wars in Africa, they're all. Idi e Amin, he was white. <laughs> Chairman Mao, he, he, he was very white. Yeah, yeah. Ah, God. Um, here's an interesting point, right? You know how uh, constantly people on from our opposition like to claim that anyone in the menosphere is all the same. They're all the same because apparently we all hold the same beliefs. Yeah. Does that does that also mean that uh, the people in the Black Lives Matter group uh, believe in the big head scientist? Because Nation of Islam is pro-black, therefore everyone who's pro-black must all believe in exactly the same thing, right? Yeah. That That is true. Therefore... They are. Uh, uh, they think white people are evil. Yeah, and gorillas come from white people. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, genetics. Uh, it's just basic evolution. Yeah, like. I mean, I have to admit, this is. I, I think yeah. this is, to the point of so crazy, it's difficult to mock because it's it it's a self parody. <laughs> This we is should like, do this with where do you go I from here? Because ninety percent of the time, when you mock something, what you do is you take it to like its like most crazy logical extreme. But here, I think they've already taken it there and further. So, like, I don't know how. I don't know if you can go further than this. We should do this again, but with some David Icke or um, I'm trying to think of the guy from the nineties who uh, who. Basically, um, what's his name from Prison Planet stole his whole, whole act. Oh, um, um, Alex Jones. Uh, but Alex Jones stole this guy's act. This is oh, a guy from the 90s. Uh, I, I've just gone blank. I can't think of the guy's name. Uh, he ended up being shot by cops because he pulled a gun on him. And, oh, God. Uh, he ended up being shot, shot dead in like 2001 or 2002 or something. So, um, but yeah, Alex Jones ripped him off, basically. Bad the whole conspiracy thing. So we, we should uh, have a look at one of those videos one one night. That might be interesting. Yeah, this is a lot really... of the a lot of the Illuminati conspiracy stuff comes from from that. I mean, this this has been very interesting. Oh I... yeah, this is this is great. This is all in the same same crazy category. <laughs> yeah, like. Okay, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about this anymore. Um, well, let, let's watch a little bit more, see if he gets to anything good. Yeah. Um, yeah, should we... Yeah, that, um, So far we've learned that white people are evil, and I, I don't think we've got to the top then, secret part not yet. Not only will you call for the destruction of this evil world, but you will call for the destruction of the evil in yourself. Oh, oh, did you, did you see that? Uh, I saw that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> give me a minute. For the destruction of this evil world, but you will call. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I, I think the Nation of Islam is anti-Semitic too. I'm, I'm not 100% sure think, about that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they are. Because cause I, I, I hear, yeah, because I hear the same sort of thing, like, because th I think they're all Jewish, aren't they? Oh, uh, Rothschild and that, yeah. Yeah. So... Was that who, that was who flashed up, wasn't it? They were only up for yeah. a second. Well, it's, it's back up now. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, so, I guess they're all Jewish. They, they look like Jewish names. So, um... Uh, I, I guess this is proof of the uh, of the Jewish conspiracy that the neo Nazis keep telling me about. Mm. I, I, I don't. I, I, maybe I don't know. Well, Jews would be part of the uh, what? What did they call the right white race again? Oh, was the Albanoids. Uh, Albanoids. Yeah, they would be actually. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yep. So no, because I, I I actually did see something. Of, um, it was uh, I've probably mentioned this a couple times before, but it was, I think it was a neo-Nazi post. But it was like, hey, um, look at all these um, these mass shooters and look how Jewish they look. <laughs> so it's not Correct. that they're white. It's not that they're white men. It's that they're Jewish. Yeah, yeah. Uh. But that, that's uh, that's what a lot of people, well, a lot of groups do is they they latch on to someone who's done something wrong and then say well that represents that group over there even if they're not actually part of that group uh, as as we well know <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> but it's fairly common oh god um, yeah this is um, pretty special so um should we, uh, uh, like, should we keep going a little? Um, to if you want, uh, uh, if you want to wrap it up, that's fine. But I'm, I'm happy to to go a little bit further. I, I don't really know. I, I don't really know. How, like, if there's any more to it, we know that white people are evil and that they control everything and that they have caused all the problems. Um, is there really anything else? I was hoping he'd go into the genetics a bit. Maybe if we jump ahead, jump ahead to like uh, twenty minutes into it or something. Yeah. Should we? Should we oh, oh, what's that? Should we? Should we? Because uh, I, I, I saw a. I think it was a meme with a barber and a banana. Oh, that that looks funny. Hundred years to live under. <laughs> it was what? You, you'll see it later. It we might. It, it might be Obama. This is a wicked, jealous-hearted people. It's not their color that makes them that way. It's the way they were Hello, taught by Yaku. They were taught contrary to good. They were taught to exalt their color. They were taught to rule. They were taught never to submit to the darker people. And if you look at white folk, I mean, they can't stand to have a black form and a black <laughs> 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 That's terrible. <laughs> you know, I did see another meme. No, but I have seen memes of like George Bush looking like a monkey as well. Or is it chimpanzee? Yeah, or that, something? that's true. That's true. So it might not necessarily be racist. No, no, that, <laughs> those pics weren't altered though. He, mm. he did actually look like the monkey. Yeah, he did. <laughs> that is that is perfect. That is amazing. <laughs> Do they even like um? If you look at the pin on um, or, or, like on on his um, on his label, uh, did they like edit that as well? What the hell is that? I don't even know. I don't know. Cause it looks like a banana now. It does too, doesn't it? Yeah. Let, let's see More. what he says. Awesome. Nothing black over them. They're work to tear you down because inside they were taught not to bow down to nothing black. And their whole religion, their education, their politics revolves around putting darker people under their foot. So when you go to Christianity that's taught by white people, even by black people, 
that are under white people. Christianity is a slave-making religion. I'm not talking about the teachings of Jesus. Well, I, I mean, that is kind of a point that um, Christianity is a, uh, it is a religion of slaves. That that was how it was founded. Yeah, and, and I can, I, I, I think there's, um, I, I can understand how someone in 1930 America, a, a black man in 1930s America, might uh, see all white men as evil. Um, it, it's just all the other stuff that that's been uh, attached yeah. to it, with the aliens living in the earth and <laughs> things like that. Not not that it justifies uh, racism and saying that you know whites are inferior, but I, I can kind of understand. Yeah. But then, this then they go that step further with the aliens in the middle of the earth, and um, uh, don't you mean twenty steps? Two, two brains, and um, yeah. This is okay. That's. Should we listen to a little bit more, or should we just wrap it up? Oh, I think we'll wrap it up. But do you think the uh, the founder what was his name? Uh, but Wallace Fard Muhammad, do you think he just sat down one weekend and, and wrote the whole uh, Jacob Two Brains thing? Probably. He was probably he like and wrote it. He was probably on something. some really really cool stuff that I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now he did disappear, so you know, maybe it's all true. Maybe. Maybe he's still in. Maybe he's still in the earth, because you know one day there is like a, a thousand years here, or or no, no, no it's the other way. Yeah, it's the other way. But but then they have yeah. like eternal life, don't they, down there? They have what? They have they have the secret to eternal life down there, don't they? Yeah. So yeah, even sure. if he is down there for like, um, he could be like, like a really old man years, down yeah. there. Yeah, he could be down there for millions of years and just be rejuvenating and shit. Wow. Yeah, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> Did we have a look at the chat? What's going on in the chat? Um, so they think the Earth is hollow. Yes, they do. Uh, that that that's that's like one of the least crazy parts of their system here. Um, he got drunk first. Yeah, he, yeah, he probably got drunk. <laughs> um, and then. It was only when he was extremely drunk that he was capable of taking whatever he discovered. Um, uh, and just... Okay. Um, Bane smokes all the weed. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Um, press B if you think Bane is a faggot. <laughs> the technology stream. We should rename it the technology yes, stream. Yes, we should. Yes. <laughs> yes. You <Yes>. albinoids. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We are fucking albinoids. I'm. I'm going to rename it now before. Um, uh, technology with the albinoids. That. That's the name of the stream. <laughs> technology with the albinoid. Uh, yeah, that that um that that's what it should be named. It's just <laughs> it's <laughs> just okay. Message retracted. What did you say, the venerable bead? Tell me. You have you 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 have taken away your message. How dare you? I am I am offended. Okay. If the Earth is hollow, then where does the Earth's magnetic field come from? It doesn't have a magnetic field. That's just, that's um, yeah. yeah. Let, let, let's face it, Mag God did it. Are, yeah, magnets are all... It's part of technology, so... Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure that it, it's it's something to do with that. Some guy is holding a magnet. Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay, um... I don't really think there's much more to say on this. So, no, I think uh, we've covered enough. Yeah, I think we have. I think we did a pretty good... How long have we been going? Over an hour uh, and a half? Yeah, so. about an hour and a half. So, uh... But that's not bad. It doesn't feel like that long. 
Okay. Well, um, goodbye. I, I think we've looked into <laughs> the nation of uh, Islam enough for yeah. This is the, the next decade. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. Okay.